Testing, testing, one, two, one, two.
Good morning, ladies. Okay, good morning, all you lovely ladies. Will you then respond? <laughs> That's it. I am um, Kalina, and my um, I, Amelia and myself are so thrilled to be your MCs today. So um, you are so welcome here. Um, we we really want to tell you this morning will be just a time for you to relax. You have now all the stresses, now you find your seat. That's always the important thing. When we come into a building, we must find our seat. You have your seat. So now you're part of the family. So just relax. Take this opportunity to just unwind today and make new friends, make new connections, and relax. Um, I'm going to quickly tell you uh, what's our program ahead. So we will have three activities, and then halfway we will have a tea and coffee and muffins, and then um, we will have another two activities, and then we, of course, we would have our lovely brunch that I'm sure you all are looking forward to. Um, for those who don't know the grounds, if you go out of that door over the courtyard, there's a toilet, um, the second door on your left, in, on the veranda. And if there's a queue, just go straight into the wall. And there's also toilet that you can use. I think you all need to give yourself a hand clap. Thank you so much for having turned up and be here. It's so cold, it's much nicer to crawl into bed and stay into bed. And I know a lot of you are five days a week so busy. And now to come another morning to be busy. But just realize today you're not going to be busy. You're just going to have fun. We are so excited about the program. So you will walk out here so blessed. So um, I'm, done, I'm not going to do all the thank yous at the end, but um, let's just do a few thank yous. Um, Christine sitting there, she has done all these tables for us with a team. And isn't it looking funny, uh, beautiful? <laughs> so before we mess it up, let's say thank you to Christine. And, <laughs> and then the second one is Amelia. Amelia and her team have done such a great job to do uh, art for us. So um, we can say thank you to Amelia and her team. And, and then all our, hello, <laughs> all our guest speakers and our performers, um, welcome to you. We are so glad, Gemma and um, Akina, uh, uh, is it Zee? We, I haven't seen her yet, but she will arrive later. We hope she arrived in time. <laughs> and then um, our speaker, Vera. And um, yeah, thank you to every one of you who came, Gemma, and, and, and those um, who will join you in the activities. Thank you so much for that. And then for our sound men at the back, yo, you give out your morning. And I know you will be so blessed by what's happening, but thank you so much for your time. We have two ladies in the, um, in the wall, and they are going to look after the little ones so that the moms can be here. And aren't we blessed for that? So we just, okay, also a big thank you to them. I hope I haven't missed out anything, but you've clapped for yourself in the beginning. So if I've messed up someone, that was you have clapped for you. <laughs> but um, now the big one is um, Bev and her food team. Bev, thank you so much. And every one of the ladies who help with the food and help with all the preparation, we really appreciate you guys. And we say a big thank you. All right. So now, with any um, ado, we're going to ask Pastor Wayne van Heerden to open this morning for us in prayer. Pastor Wayne. Good morning. And while we're saying thank you, I think a big thank you to Karina as well for 
helping and doing the organization for today. This morning, as I was preparing for this, I was quite overwhelmed to think that Karina walked 800 kilometers <laughs> to uh, put this together and to bring a talk this morning. <laughs> when are you doing it again? <laughs> um, and then also this morning, I woke up with that song, um, I'll walk 100 miles, I'll walk 100 miles with you, or something like that, isn't there that that uh, song. <laughs> um, this morning as I stopped and before I go into prayer, I just want to share with you a few verses from Philippians chapter 3. And um, it's a text in which the Apostle Paul writes and he says, Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal. But I press on to take hold of that to which Jesus Christ took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But what thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And um, this morning, as Karina will share, I walk with God. Is, is a journey, and it is a journey that is filled with good times and bad times, a journey filled with hopes and, and difficulties. And this morning, as we come together, let us forget what is behind, and let us strain towards what is ahead. Yesterday is gone, but yet we have today, and we have tomorrow. Let us pray. Almighty God, Almighty God, we praise and thank you for this glorious day. We thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you have made and that we have this wonderful privilege this morning to participate in this beautiful event. I just pray your blessing, Lord, upon all women, especially as we celebrate Women's Month, as we are reminded, Lord, that it is through our mothers and it is through women and their love that, that we have the world in which we live today. And Lord, I just pray, be with Karina this morning as she gives her testimony about her walk and as it reminds us about our walk with you. I pray, Lord, that each one may be touched by that. But Lord, we just pray indeed and pray the blood of Jesus upon all that happens today. And may he bless and guide everything that happens today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning when I see all the nursery school people who have joined us too and we want to say we are and um, you are so welcome you are part of this church and we always want you with all our celebrations and all our meetings you are always welcome to join in with us so um, our first item on the agenda I really want you guys to relax. I'm going to say it because I'm not relaxed. <laughs> so I want you to be relaxed. So um, today, Amelia can come closer. Amelia now um, will do our um, activity and she will do the first one for us. But I just want to say something about Amelia. When I, I spoke to Amelia and I said to Amelia, um, we celebrate Women's Month, so I can must not say anything. We, we must women. <laughs> I said to Amelia, Amelia, um, there's something else. I so badly want to think more about the things about you. And she said, Kalina, I'm very normal. I'm just a normal person. But Amelia isn't so normal. Amelia, <laughs> Amelia is really a child of God. She is born again. She's rescued She's re, um, redeemed, and, and we can just see her loving the Lord Jesus so much. 
Amelia is married to Peter, her husband, who she lovingly support. And Amelia have a beautiful daughter overseas, who she miss terribly. So all of your children in the nursery school are her kids. She loves them dearly. So Amelia, um, we have a long-standing relationship with Amelia. Amelia started at our church. Um, she was a member, and then she opened the nursery school. Amelia, is it 15 years ago? 15 years ago, Amelia opened the nursery school with how many kids? She opened the nursery school with three kids. So last year, Amelia, Amelia wandered a little bit, but she couldn't stay away very long, so she came back. And last year, Amelia was part of enlarging and improving and updating the nursery school. So we have at the moment over a hundred very happy little preschoolers in the nursery school. Well done, Amelia. And... It's not all. Amelia, by her motivation, Amelia is going to start a new baby class from the 1st of um, September, just around the corner, in a week's time. She's very calm and relaxed, but she's very busy. But she's going to start a baby class. So, Amelia, we just thank God, and we, we as women value you. Um, for being such inspiration, so passionate, so full of vision, and so disciplined. And we just say, well done, girl. You go. <laughs> Thank you, Karina. Nothing about what you just said, it's me. It's nothing about me. It's, it's God working through me. And um, I've got a wonderful team that supports me, and without them, it won't be possible. Um, I don't know about you, but when I say to my husband, and I'm sorry if I use Afrikaans every now and again, because that's my mother tongue, I would say to him, Peter, ek het nou gedink. Like, I just, I've got this idea, and I can see in his face, it's like, uh -uh. Some, something's coming. <laughs> Either we're going to move the furniture or we're going to do the garden or something. Now, Karina, when she comes to me and she says, Amelia, I've got this idea. And I think, uh-uh. He <laughs> come it. He come it. Karina, so this is your idea. Thank you so much. Um, it's quite intimidating standing in front of 100 ladies. I much prefer standing in front of 20 four-year-olds. It's a lot easier. So um, we're going to start this morning with an icebreaker, and um, it's an art icebreaker. So please don't cringe where you're sitting, Mama. <laughs> I know you didn't want to come when I said there's going to be an art project, but I promise you, it's, please relax. It's going to be fun, and it's going to be easy. And yeah, before I start, I just want to share something very interesting with you. In Genesis 1 verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth he is the creator and when we are born we are born so creative we we, we got that from God because we are made in his image so all of us were, are born creative but due to people and our own insecurities we lose that along the way we don't believe in ourselves we get scared when somebody says to me draw a picture or do a painting because please I can't do that I'm not creative and that's absolute nonsense because we are created in his image and he's the creator. Um, and God added color to the world because in the beginning everything was dark. Like that piece of black paper in front of you, it's dark. And we're going to add some color to that. Like God added color by making the plants and creating the birds and the animals on the earth, walking the earth. And um, then he created man. So, as a teacher, and you can ask my team, we do not believe prescribing to kids what they must do, what colors they must use. If they decide to be purple today, it's okay. You can be purple. If they decide the tree must be orange, why not? If we look at Picasso's works, nobody frowns upon that. And soon enough, they're going to grow up and look at the world around them and then realize by themselves that trees are actually green and the bark is brown. And 
I, that's why we also don't say you flesh color and you brown and like that. If you want to be blue, that's high okay. Um, life happens and then we realize that color plays a very important part in our lives. So in front of you, there's a little bag. And in the bag, there, is, there, there are two sponges and two ear or nose buds. So please take your... your and you can work on the plastic so that we don't mess on the tablecloths. Okay, so you can just put the plastic bubble wrap on the black, and then our teachers are going to come around and just squirt some paint on it. So then you're going to use the sponges, and you're going to spread the paint to different colors on each little circle. But please make sure that you put the paint on the bubble side, not the smooth side. Okay. Teachers, will you look? Okay. Then once you've spread the paint with the sponges, you're going to turn around your circle and you're going to make a print on your paper. Just going to turn it around and you're going to print. So I'm just going to quickly help them. I'll come back now.
So I can see some of you are very, very creative. After you've pressed the plastic, on your tables you will find some bottles with black and white inside. For the artists around here, and I know there is a couple, where's Vera? You can use the white and the black and just use your, um, your earbud by dipping it in the white and the black. Add some shade on there. And then lastly, on the tables, you will find a permanent a marker in silver. So you can just draw stems for your flowers. Yeah, look, it's beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> it doesn't have to look like this. Yeah, okay.
masterpiece says has been completed, please use the pen to sign it and then you can take it home. <laughs> Put the date as well.
Thank you, ladies. I hope you had fun. Are you done? Wiped your hands and discard off all the, the sponges and the earbuds. I really saw some beautiful, beautiful artwork. So thank you for participating. I hope you had fun. Next up, we've got Akina. Um, she, she attends Maranatha next door. And she's also part, and she's busy with her Advance to Ballet at the Royal Academy of Dance. And um, she, um, she's also part of the is it Mzanzi, Mzanzi Youth Ballet. So she's going to do um, two pieces for us. The first is a classical ballet piece on point, and then she will do a um, contemporary piece for us. So I'm going to leave it to her to impress us. I'm so happy I came across Akina, otherwise I had to do that for you. <laughs> it, been, it brings back so many memories because my daughter is also a professional ballerina or was a professional ballerina. So when I look at her, it actually makes me sad. Um, yeah. So next she's going to do a more um, contemporary piece, and, um, but she's just getting dressed.
Tina, before you leave, <laughs> thank you so much. It was beautiful. We, we loved it. I don't know about you, but I did. Thank you. And good luck with all the dancing and ballet. And Vera, did Vera disappear? Vera, there you go. So um, I nearly thought that I need to do Vera's stalk for her. So <laughs> that would have been quite a thing. So um, we just um, wait for Vera to get the shelf together. <laughs> so what a blessing it is for us to invite Vera Sattler to the stage to come and share um, about her walk with God and how God has shown her that her art is so good. Vera is, um, Vera is a wife of uh, an elder at our church. He's the husband of Vera. <laughs> because we always hear that you're the wife of so and so. Yeah. But yeah. And Vera served in so many ways. She diligently, wherever she see a need, she would always help. So we really value you also, Vera. So God bless. Thank you. Morning. Morning, ladies. I hope you're having fun. And, um, you know, I'm not for a person to stand in front of a crowd of people and talk about my walk with God. I started freaking out when I was asked. So if I stutter, please excuse me. I'm not used to standing in front of a crowd. Okay, I just want to tell you about my story. Um, I was raised in a home. <coughs> just, just excuse me quickly, sorry. Okay. I was raised in a home without God. I didn't know God. I didn't know that he loved me. Um, the only time I knew about God is when I was in high school, you know, with the Bible classes in primary school and high school, and also when they gave us the blue Bibles. I read it. I sort of believed, but I, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to accept God in my life. But when I gave my life to <coughs> and Jesus, about eight years ago, I actually realized that God was with me all the time. Even when I didn't believe he was there. And, you know, I can say a lot of stories of where he was there for, in my life. And one particular story stands out. Um, when I was a teenager, <coughs> and you know how teenagers that we are, we are naughty, I used to bunk a lot in high school. Yes, I did. <laughs> so one day I decided, no, I'm going to bunk. I'm going to go and visit my boyfriend in Rhodesfield because he was off work that day. He's my husband now, by the way. <laughs> so, so I went to Kempton City in Kempton and changed from, you know, my school clothes to my civic clothes. And... I was walking past the train station and thinking about life, what's out there for me, and something said to me, stop, look up, and I did. And I actually realized the train was right there. I was, if I took one more step, I wouldn't be here. And I thought, ah, oh, that was just luck. 
But now I actually realize it was God that was telling me, stop, look up. He loves me so much. And you know, ladies, he loves each and every one of you. Um, see how I'm shaking. <laughs> um, so, as a young lady, I loved being creative. I loved knitting, sewing, crocheting, drawing, and painting. And my passion was painting. And I always had that little voice in my head, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. And I didn't share anything. And I always did things at home, but I never shared it. And the one day, God said to me, share your paintings with your family. So I did that for Christmas presents, and everyone was so amazed, and they say, you are so talented. Um, that little voice is Satan telling you, you're not good enough. And, you, and ladies, you have to realize, you are so precious to God. He, he is there, he's always there for you. Now, I've really lost where I was, but anyway. <laughs> uh, my favorite saying in the Bible, the verse, Matthew 17, verse 20. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say, you can say this to the mountain. Move here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. So you know, ladies... The devil will always make yourself doubt. I know that some of us are never happy with ourselves. My tummy's too big. Oh, I hate my hair. You can't have that piece of cake because you know what that will do. But you know what? We all have our issues. But Jesus loves us no matter what we look like, what shape we are, what background we come from, what color we are, what age we are. He loves us. He just, you just have to give his heart to him. We are all beautiful in his eyes. We are precious to him. And we are all princesses to the almighty king. Fear is one of Satan's most popular weapons he uses against us. So be strong. We are important and we are beautiful. Um, one of my other uh, favorite uh, uh, verses in, is Genesis 1 verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So if he's created us in his own image, doesn't that tell us something? We are all precious to him. So ladies, if anyone is feeling sad or lonely, you must have friends and family to listen. You are not alone. We are all here to encourage each other. We are all so blessed to have special friends in our lives. So ladies, if you cannot think of any friends and family that would understand where you are, look around you now. God has sent them. Thank you, ladies. Have a good day. We're going to change a little bit of the program because our water hasn't boiled yet. So we're going to first have our singer now. So. It's going to be me. It's not going to be me. <laughs> you can relax. Okay, so my phone just decided to, uh, to freeze. Um, so next up, we've got um, Gemma, and she is attending Maranatha, and she's only 16 years old. And um, Gemma has been since the age of eight, you uh, dis discovered your talent and pursued that, and she loves to write her own music, and she also is part of the worship team next door. So we look forward to listening to you. God bless.
never been a moment you were forgotten you were not hopeless though you have been broken your innocence stolen i hear Is our water warm? Yeah. Okay. So we can now um, break up for tea. You can go and help yourself. There's four stations. So two at this side and two at the other side. Um, there's cups and um, muffins and you can make your own. Just grab your stuff and come and sit at the table and make it. I'm going to give you 15 minutes at the longest. So 15 minutes to get your stuff and come and sit down again. So go for it. 